well, my name is Emmanuel Tete Mensa. My Ghanaian name is Nitete. The Christian name is Emmanuel. Family name is, is Mensa from the Okomso family, from a village in Accra, some of Accra called Aplaku. Well, I was brought up in Ghana. I went to school in the, a village, right? Uh, a village which was, I could say that it was a very hard upbringing in the village, right? Water was very scarce. We had to wake up early in the morning, sometimes around 4 a.m., walk for three miles to the riverside, get a wash down, fetch some water, and bring it home, which will be used in preparing food and things. Sometimes at lunchtime, we don't have even water to drink. So after school, we got to walk back to the riverside and get water. So it was really a tough upbringing. Well, the first job I had was a financial development officer with the Circle Trust Limited in London, right? I applied for the job and I got the job. From what I gathered, I was one of the best candidates who has applied for the job, so I had a job. And I can tell you that I did a very fantastic job for them because when I joined the organization, they were having financial problems, but I was able to ensure that the rents which they were collecting set up a proper rent system for them and ensure that we had money in the kitty to pay for the staff because it was a very responsible position. I had to ensure that there was enough money in the coffers to pay wages. It dawned on us that it was important that we teach them the language, it was too late. And they were blaming us for not making it a conscious effort to teach them the language. Besides, I had all the books to teach them because it's not only about speaking the girl language, but I can speak and write. But that was a fault on ourselves. When we came to Liverpool here or in England, right? there were what we call our elders who were already living here, right? And their notion was that our local languages weren't that important, right? And that these kids would never have to use the language. So it was looked upon. So when you're talking about other generations before us, the kids couldn't speak and it wasn't a problem for them. So we've been in argument, we've had several arguments around the same issue. We've never moved on. But when I realized that, look, it is important to teach them, it is important that when they were still that young, we should have taught them the language, it was late. But when I'm saying that it's late, it's late and never late, because at the moment, when they come around, we speak the language with them. Because organizations, when they need, when you engage the service of black employees, when you're talking about diversity, right? It's not having a black staff within the organization. It does not work. The whole culture, right? The whole culture about diversity will need to change. They've got to accept black people as part of landscape and part of the management. And the problem we've got here is that most times you've got black workers, but not black managers or black people in senior positions within organizations. So people have got to the notion that black people are not capable of management, black people are not capable of making decisions and things. And so when they come across one who is really up to the job and up to the job, then there's real, real, real awakening. But some of them have got the notion that, as for me, I would not like to manage by a black staff. Sometimes when you take the, black, the white staff into supervision sessions, you could see all the body language. It, the body language says a lot, right? But it's part of my remit is to organize business sessions, whether fortnightly or monthly, organize business sessions. And after the meeting, after the session, I'll send, give them notes about the meeting, what needs to be done, what needs to be done, whether, whether training is and other things are required. I'll make sure that all those sort of things are organized. So, so it's important that you are developing the staff at the same time, right, so that they will be able to progress. Mind these things, actually, whoever I've worked with, I try to encourage them, I try to empower them, and I try to make sure that they are trained to the job that they employ to do. I was 
affecting to um, I went to disciplinary hearing, right? All the evidence and everything was presented. The union explained the situation to them, that sort of thing. Those who gathered the information, they are the same people sitting in the in the judgment, right? Which shouldn't be the case. But they passed judgment that I've been sacked, right? So when they say I've been sacked, great. So that's when the real that's when the real this thing um, battle starts. Because I've got the right to go to the industrial tribunal. So the union approached me that my employers wanted to negotiate with me because I was going to appeal. The appeal didn't come on, right? Because from what I get it, from what I gathered was that if the appeal went on, the case would be squashed, right? But I've had a situation where it was not possible for me to return to the organization, right? So a case was involved and I was um, what we call mutual severance for them to pay me to leave the organization. So they paid you? The hour was paid. Right. They paid you a lot of money. You yeah, paid me to leave the organization, yes. They paid you a lot of money. They paid me a lot. <laughs> they paid me they paid, they paid me. a lot of money. <laughs> they paid me a lot of money, money. money. Including, my, including pension contribution they should have done, which wasn't done. I, I was living in Chirubuk on Antrim Street. Right, in Antrim Street. My kids were born in that house. We moved in, into Antrim Street in December 1984. We moved in there. From 1996, we had our kids, the local school, which was Roscoe Primary School. They were the first black kids to go into that school. There was no black kids there when they went to the school then uh, completed that sort of thing. But around 1996, we started experiencing what our term as racial incidents, right? Every single window on our house was broken. We were living at the end terrace, right? A house was the end of the terrace. It became a target. Every window, the bay window, our front door, they were shuttered. And closer to our, closer to our, this thing, our house was the brook. You know, the two brook, the brook. It's just close to it. The youth congregate there. They congregate around the, the brook, right, at night time. And there was even racial chanting about us. Emmanuel and the family, E.T. and the family, with racial abuse. The chanting was going on at night time, maybe around 8 o'clock. They moved from the brook to the gable end of our house and stood there starting chanting racial abuse. So we uh, never came, so we called the police. The police never arrived. Police never arrived. And these kids were, this was before alligating, alligating was done in Liverpool. So we had the bricks thrown at our house. We report to the police. Sometimes it takes ages for the police to come and see to it. At the end of it all, in September 2001, 2001, 2000, I wrote to Norman, uh, Norman Bettison, who was, the, who was then the chief constable of Merseyside, about the racial abuse we were suffering, right? We got to a situation where we had victim support, actually mounted cameras in our house, right? So that the perpetrators could be caught. To survive, not only in Liverpool, anywhere, right? You need support networks. I'm a devout Christian. I practice my faith, belong to the church. The church is also instrumental in my life. In fact, our Reverend Minister, when we're having all these racial problems and things, not only speaking to them on the phone, but he went to the Watson police station to complain about their lack of action. There's the Message Association of Ghanaians, and then we've got our own organization, which is um, our Ga people, the People Association, which, we've, which we established in Liverpool here for the over 20 years now, which is going, which is also very, 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 very good. It's about getting the network and then about getting on well with your neighbors. When I moved in here over 16 years ago, we were the, only, we were the one of the first black family to move in this thing. I know people who have the apprehension, but we moved in and they could see who we are. We accepted the neighborhood. We do things for each other.